Hey everyone, Emma and Shane here and today we are having a look at SeaWorld Orlando in our guide everything you need to know before you go. We'll be taking a good look at all the attractions and some of the facts you might not know when heading out to SeaWorld Orlando. So if you're heading out on your vacation and have a limited time and you want to squeeze absolutely everything in, this guide will maximize your time and tick off them attractions. We'll let you know our personal favorite attractions, how long we would wait for them and why. Now before we dive right in, we know everyone comes to SeaWorld for different reasons. Some of you will have small children and Sesame Street Land will be perfect for you and some of you don't even like the big roller coasters so you have all the aquariums to explore. So all the information we'll be giving today is our own opinion and based on our own experiences within SeaWorld Orlando. As we work our way around the lagoon, we hope we answer all the questions about all the attractions SeaWorld Orlando is in a great location, it's only a 15 minute drive from MCO's Orlando International Airport and this is a great location because there's so many hotels just outside the park. SeaWorld Orlando is easily a full day park, there is so much to see and do. There's so many things you can upgrade from all day dining to even quick queue and reserve seating. Unlimited front of line access is for participating attractions only for one day. All ride heights and safety restrictions do apply. Now here's a list of the attractions that you can use the front of line for. Mako, Manta, Kraken, Infinity Falls and Journey to Atlantis. Pricing does vary so check the SeaWorld website for more details. Now it's quite common during spring and summer we can have afternoon showers. And sometimes that rain just does not want to go away. But SeaWorld is committed to give everybody that visits SeaWorld Orlando, if it's either just a little bit of rain or a lot of rain, a complimentary return visit to the park to be used within one year of admission. All you have to do is stop by guest services or submit your information on their website. You will need your original attraction ticket plus order number to receive your sunny day ticket. Now there is a few tickets that it doesn't qualify on and these are the following. Sunny day tickets are only for guests with single day tickets or multiple day tickets and not available for past members. Now this park has so much to offer with all its coasters, animals and Sesame Street for the younger ones. Every year the park is getting bigger and bigger with its campaign to be the roller coaster capital of Orlando. Yes, last year Icebreaker opened, this year Pipeline is due to open and there's even been some construction spotted around the park this year, possibly for their new attraction coming in 2024. So let's head right over to our first attraction which is Manta, the only flying coaster in Florida. Quick passes are accepted on this attraction. Everyone, this is one of my favourite roller coasters here at SeaWorld Orlando. Now we have ridden the first one of these back in Alton Towers developed by B&M and John Wardley. But in my opinion, this is my favourite one out of the two. Now I have to say one of my favourite things about this coaster is the pretzel loop after that first drop. OMG. I love this coaster, it's got so many amazing elements. Plus, it's just absolutely awesome. You have to try it in your next visit. Now on to our next ride, the Sky Tower. This Sky Tower has been an icon to the park since 1974 and is an awesome way to catch them panoramic views of Orlando. Now this attraction is an additional cost, but if you are becoming an annual pass holder, if either it's silver, gold or platinum, it is free. But with regular tickets, it's an extra $5 per person. Next up, Journey to Atlantis. Now on to one of our favourite water rides. Journey to Atlantis is a water ride with elements of a roller coaster. Now you definitely need to pack your poncho for this water roller coaster because you will get soaked with their multiple splashdowns. And the quick pass is accepted here on this attraction. We love this attraction with our friends and family. It's so much fun and you get absolutely soaked. Now moving on to one of our favourite roller coasters in the park and it's Kraken. This is a B&M floorless roller coaster with seven inversions. We love this coaster, but if you're not a fan of being spun upside down, stay away from this coaster. Quick passes are accepted and all you have to do is wave your arms in the air like you just don't care. Our next roller coaster is Mako. It's the tallest, fastest and longest hyper coaster in Orlando. 
Now we absolutely love this coaster. You get amazing views of 8 SeaWorld Orlando plus all of Orlando. When you're going up that lift hill to that 200 foot drop, it is amazing. And after the turnaround, it is just jam packed with great little pops of ejector seat airtime. I really enjoy the fact that the ride has sound interactive elements dotted around the park and Express Pass is accepted. The next attraction is the Flamingo Paddle Boats. Now this attraction is an upcharge of $6 per person. It's such a great way for Emma to rest her feet whilst I'll paddle the boat around the lagoon as Emma takes in the sights and I get a sweat on. But it is a great way to relax and get some unique photos of the park from this angle. Our next attraction is a very wet one with Infinity Falls. Infinity Falls has the world's tallest river rapid drop. We definitely recommend you either taking new shoes and probably a whole new outfit. You can get pretty soaked on this ride. Now that drop is 40 feet. That is absolutely crazy, but you know what? We love this attraction. You get absolutely soaked. It's great on the warm months, especially during the day because it means you get to be completely dry by your next attraction. Just remember to bring a poncho. And the express pass is accepted here as well. Now the next ride we're going to look at is Icebreaker and I have to be truly honest about my review about this ride. Unfortunately it is not my top go to roller coaster in SeaWorld Orlando. Now I do like the layout of the attraction and I love the forward and backward launches. My critique is more about the seat and the train. I just find the restraints to be really uncomfortable when riding this coaster. I find when you hit certain elements your legs are pinned in so tight that it actually hurts. But like I say the actual layout of the coaster is actually quite awesome. You really do get some great ejector air time in such a short compact layout. Unfortunately quick passes are not accepted on this attraction as yet but I do feel once pipeline opens this will change. Now we're heading off into Sesame Street Land for the Super Grover's Box Car Derby. The only roller coaster in the children's area. This is a great family attraction and reminds me very much of Woody Woodpecker's roller coaster in Universal and Goofy's Barnstormer at the Magic Kingdom. This is a great attraction if it's your first roller coaster. Sesame Street Land is a great place, it's fun, it's bright and very exciting. And here's a rundown of the attractions you'll find in this great little area. Big Bird's Twirl and Whirl, a teacup style ride where you can spin like crazy. The great thing about this attraction is you control how fast you want to spin whilst riding. Our next attraction is the Sunny D Carousel. This family favourite attraction has got so many bright horses, you've got benches if you don't want to go on a horse and it's just fun for all the family. Rosita's Harmony Hills. This outdoor play area you can climb and crawl and play magical instruments. Ring and drum your way into fun at the coolest play area on the street. Cookie Drop, a great start for building your way up to Falcon's Fury. Get carried away in the cloud of cookie crumbs as you bounce up and down on Cookie Monster's cookie drop. Elmo's Choo Choo Train, all aboard. For everyone on the Elmo's Choo Choo Train, an interactive bell ringing, horn honking train ride you won't want to miss. Rubber Ducky's Waterworks. This outdoor water splash pad with jets, waterfalls and water blasts. Cool off and explore the world of creative water play with bubbling fun for everyone. The next attraction is Slimy Slider. This is a cute children's attraction. Climb into Slimy Sliders for an exhilarating swoop and swirl ride through Oscar the Grouch's treasured compost collection. And our final Sesame Street's attraction is Abby's Flower Tower. As you saw up, up in the sky in your colourful flower pots aboard Abby's Flower Tower. Get great views of Sesame Street whilst you spin your pots. And the last attraction which we haven't really spoke about in this vlog but have spoke about in lots of other vlogs, I'll link the card in the description down below, is Pipeline. 
Now this will be the world's first surf coaster with dynamic restraints and we are super excited to see this attraction open this year at SeaWorld Orlando. Now if I had one critique about SeaWorld it would be the lack of flatbed rides and dark rides which I do feel can help alleviate the long queues in the park by spreading out the public in different attractions. Now let's talk lockers. Lockers can be found in several locations across the park, meaning if you get an all day ticket, the great thing is, is you can move your items around in different locations as you move around the park, saving you time and you're not having to run back to one location. You will find the lockers near attractions what you're not allowed loose articles in your pockets when riding, but the locations are as followed. The park entrance, Manta, Journey to Atlantis, Mako and Infinity Falls. Lockers can cost anywhere between 10 to $20 dependent on the size of the locker that you wish to purchase. You can also rent strollers and wheelchairs should you need them, but they do have to be booked in advance. And prices do vary from day to day and dependent on the season. So we hope that this video has given you some insight into the attractions at the coaster capital of Orlando, SeaWorld. If you have any questions about this vlog, please feel free to drop down in the comments below your question and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. We hope you're having an amazing SeaWorld day out and you never know, you might even bump into us. So everyone, if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. That really helps out the channel. Make sure you check out all our social medias and our website, gotagoorlando.com. So now all we can see is TikTok, gotta go, gotta go Orlando. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. And don't forget about these two videos right here.